All right guys, so we only have three days left to make sure that this Razer Pocket Mod is all set for my buddy's daughter's birthday. So let's go wrap this thing up. First thing I wanna address is the seat. It's not too beat up, but it doesn't really go with the color scheme anymore. So we're gonna change this out. It's also got a little tear right here. Now with dirt bike seats, I usually take out all the staples and then slowly unwrap it from the edges and replace it completely. But it looks like Razor may have put an adhesive on the foam on this one. So I'm just gonna keep this layer on this and I'm gonna get the marine grade vinyl on top of it. It stretches very easily. I use this for my Razor builds as well. And then for adhesive, I'm using Scotch 77 and then I'm stapling it with some quarter inch T50 staples. If you're interested in checking out the any of the items that we're using for this project, I'll have everything linked in the description below. Considering my limited experience with upholstery, I don't think it turned out that bad. Check that out. The edges are pretty smooth, though in the back corners, I have a little bit of wrinkling, but that simply cannot be avoided since this is still stretching vinyl over round objects. Here's what the bottom looks like. T50 staples. I trimmed the vinyl just enough so it covers the original seat cover. I think it turned out pretty clean. Let me know what you guys think. Just got the brake light working. I often get asked how I wire up these type of brake lights to these razors and usually these Weber or Kunray type of controllers have an output for a brake light switch already. I just hook up the black and red wire coming from that to the ground and power going to the brake light. But in this scenario, there are three wires coming from the brake light. One is red, one is green, one is black. One is supposed to be for the brake light, one is supposed to be for the running lamps, and then one is ground. Ground, I just hook up to ground. Now the red wire and the green wire, which are the brake light and the running lamp, I hook both of them up to the red wire going to the controller because I want the brake lamp to be relatively bright since we are not hooking up a headlight or running lights on this scooter. And then as far as the scooter side, most Razors, MX650s, MX500s, these Razor pocket mods, even their go-karts come with a signal switch. This usually communicates to the original controller when to cut power when you apply brakes. I wanted to have that feature since this scooter is going to a nine-year-old girl. I want to make sure that she has all the stopping power needed. So that's actually this wire going straight to the brake lever. I have that hooked up to the brake signal switch on this controller, you'll see there's two sets of them. Purple and black is what's common for these Vever type controllers. Just taking off the original freewheel and sprocket because I'm suspecting it to be bent. And I'm putting one on from my SX500. I just stole it off the stock rear wheel. I'm also gonna be taking off this 140 mil rear rotor. And we're gonna be using that on the pocket mod. Yeah, it definitely spins a lot straighter now. Now let's go install the brake disc rotor from this SX500 wheel. So I'm just using this uh, disc brake adapter that I got from Amazon. Removing the drum brake assembly was pretty straightforward. You just had to lock it in a vise and then you just had to turn it counterclockwise to break it loose. And then this one simply just threads on.
You definitely have to be careful with these razors if you're using an impact. I never fully torque it down with an impact. I always tan torque it just to make sure we don't over tighten or strip anything. So once you have the rotor fully seated, you don't have to worry about it coming loose when you're using the brakes since the wheel rotates this way. And then when you clamp on the brake, it actually helps tighten it even more. To mount a brake disc caliper, I'm using another adapter by Matric. This utilizes the factory SX500, MX500, or MX650 rear caliper. It's designed to be used with a 140 millimeter rotor, but obviously if you want to, you could go 160 millimeter with the zoom brake kit for the rear, which comes with an adapter that you can just bolt onto this one. If you're interested in getting more information about this, I'll have it linked in the description below. I'm gonna to torque everything down and then we're gonna recenter the caliper to the rotor. You can adjust the caliper position by just turning this knob counterclockwise or clockwise to bring it out or bring it in. As you see, there's just a little bit of brake drag right now. See what happens when you turn it in. It gets looser. Turn it in. All right, looks like we just got the adjustment right. Zero drag. Caliper works as it should. I'm actually gonna loosen this rear wheel. I just realized I forgot to mount the front tab of the bracket. We just gotta add a bolt and a locking nut right here just to keep the caliper from rotating. Now I just gotta run the brake cable and then adjust the tension and we'll test it out. I'm gonna run a zip tie down here since we do not want that dragging low. All right, that seems like pretty good tension right there. This thing is looking pretty good. I'm glad to finally see this thing fully put back together. Though I'm gonna take a heat gun, see if I can get rid of this crease. I think the vinyl just has a little bit of a fold imprint from being in that position for so long. So I'm gonna see if I can heat this up and get that out. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but heating up the vinyl upholstery definitely got rid of a lot of that crease in the middle, but it'll go away over time even more as it heats up and stretches. The last thing that I wanna take care of before we take this thing out for its first test drive is clean up this front panel area. I don't currently have a solution for the charge port as far as mounting it permanently on this because I can't really push it back too much. It's gonna bang up directly against the battery. So I think it's gonna be okay just hanging down like this. As long as it doesn't fall back in, which it shouldn't since it's tied in place back there. But I definitely wanna close up this big hole over here where the on off switch used to be. And the only thing I can think of at this time is modifying the original switch, which is obviously no longer needed since we have a keyed ignition now. But I'm just gonna chop this up to maybe about here, which should have it butt up right against the battery. Should at least look cleaner than an open hole in this side. It actually turned out pretty clean. It's perfectly flat on the back side. And let's go see how it fits. Dang, that is perfect. 
That is exactly how I wanted it to look. Okay, let's take this thing out and see how fast it actually goes. I'm gonna be using this Psych Plus GPS based speedometer as one form of testing, but I'm also gonna be using this speedometer app just so we have two ways of measuring the top speed. Yeah, I've definitely still got to resolve some sort of vibration, but so far so good. I'm pretty sure we hit over 30 miles an hour. Let's go check that out. All right, so official top speed so far is 30.5 miles an hour. Let's see what it looks like on the speedometer app. Speedometer app says 31 miles per hour, and obviously this is satellite based also. So there it is, guys. We went over 30 miles an hour with the Razer Pocket Mod. Obviously I can make a couple changes and make it go a little faster, but you guys have to keep in mind, this is set up for a nine year old girl for her birthday. So we can't get too aggressive with it. All right, so I figured out the thumping noise and the vibrations. The rear wheel is still slightly bent. So I'm just gonna go ahead and order a new replacement rear wheel just to make sure that this thing is safe to ride. All right, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with the Razer Pocket Mod project, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.